Welcome to a very, very special story time about anti-racism, being against racism. Do you know what racism is? Racism is treating people differently because of the color of their skin. For instance, treating someone well because their skin is light and treating someone unkindly because their skin is dark. And because of that, I would like to dedicate this story time to George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey and Raya Milton and all the African Americans who are no longer with us because of racism. You may have noticed in the last few weeks, maybe on the TV, maybe in your own streets, people marching and people chanting and shouting and even getting arrested. And they seem very angry and it might be scary, but they are fighting for something good. They are fighting to end racism. It has been going on too long and it needs to end now. And that is what they're, that is what they're shouting. For you see, racism is a big problem in our country. It is a big problem and it is a dangerous problem. And it is an old problem. It is older than our country. And it is very harmful for our communities, our black communities, our brown communities, our indigenous Native American communities, and really for our whole country because none of us can be free until we're all free. And that is why everyone is marching, because it's been here for so long and it should have been gone a long time ago. And they are saying, no, we need to end this. And people marched, people have been marching for a long time. And I want to read to you a story actually about a march that happened about 60 years ago. And actually the ch children marched in this. And children are marching now too, because children want change, just like grown-ups. Everyone wants this to end. And this is about, this is a, call, a story called Let the Children March by Monica Clark Robinson, and illustrated by Frank Morrison. And I want you to, when we're reading, I want you to just look at all the faces and try to guess how they're feeling by all the faces that you see. Let the children march. Nineteen sixty three, Birmingham, Alabama. That's where this story takes place. I couldn't play on the same playground as the white kids. I couldn't go to their schools. I couldn't drink from their water fountains. There were so many things I couldn't do. One warm spring night, my family went to church. We weren't there to have regular services. We were there to hear Dr. King speak. We were there to plan. Dr. Martin Luther King is a great man who fought against racism and made huge changes in our country. He wanted to raise an army of peaceful protesters to fight for freedom. Protesters are the people that march and that they say enough is enough. They protest against racism. His brown eyes flashing fire and love. Dr. King told us the time had come to march. If I march, Mama said, I'll lose my job. Sure enough. I can't march, Daddy said. I got a family to feed. The weight of the world rested on our parents' shoulders. But this burden, this time, did not have to be theirs to bear.
These are the children. How do you think they feel in this in this picture? And the mama and the dad. They look scared. I don't have a boss to fear, my brother said, or a job to lose. We can march this time. We'll be Dr. King's army, I said. I'll be fine, Daddy, I promised. Don't worry, Mama. That's very brave. That's very brave of them. And Dr. King didn't like children being put in harm's way. He was a daddy, too, after all. But he said that though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. Let the children march. They will lead the way. On May 2nd, a sunny Thursday, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church, dressed in our best, feet ready. In a silence so loud that all I could hear was my racing heart, we began to walk. Hand in hand, we walked, we marched, so frightened, yet certain of what was right for freedom. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm going to walk on. Would I be hurt? Would we be heard? Would it all be worth it in the end? I wanted to run from the angry faces in the crowd. Run from danger. Run from fear. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, on and on we marched, we marched, we marched, singing the songs of freedom. One thousand strong, we came. Hate dogged my heels all that day. Its yellowed canine teeth sharp, but courage walked by my side and kept me going. Disperse, or you'll be jailed, the police shouted the first day. Disperse, or you'll get wet, the police shouted the second day. Disperse, or we'll release the dogs, the police shouted the third day. We did not disperse. We kept on marching. We wouldn't stop until things started to change. Hmm. Hundreds of us went to jail on the first day, and even more on the second. My turn wasn't until the third. After I was sprayed by water, stronger than anything I've ever felt, rough hands pushed me forward, and I fell to my knees. In the police wagon, I was going to jail. That's really scary, isn't it? A child going to jail. Dr. King reassured our parents, Don't worry about your children, he said. They're gonna be. They're going to be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail, for they are doing a job for not only themselves, but for all of America, and for all mankind. That night, crowded into a cell too small for even half of the kids, we sang, We shall overcome. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. And 
Freedom is coming. Our parents couldn't be there with us, but still we sang, wrapped in the proud and loving arms of our ancestors. I was still in jail, but we heard that the next day and the next more kids marched. The water hoses they used to sting us could not stop our fierce tide. The path may be long and troubled, but I'm gonna walk on. Turn the other cheek, we had been taught. Show love where there is hate. What a beautiful message. Show love where there is hate. The world watched as hate bruised us, but for seven days we walked only in love. The jail swelled to bursting. And even President Kennedy took notice. Daddy said the president received letters and calls about us from all over the world. All over the world. Our march would become a memory, a small part of a larger story. But we had been heard, and the seeds of revolution were sown. Revolution, that means big change for the better. Two days and nights I stayed in the jail, some stayed even longer. When I left I was tired and sore, and my best dress was ripped. But my smile was as wide as the Mississippi River. I had made a difference. I'm so proud of you, baby girl, Mama said. Your march was what made them see. With nothing more than our feet, voices, and courage, we had done what others could not. Change was right around the corner. We felt like it like a cool, we felt it like a cool breeze in an Alabama August. On May 10th, the great news rang out. Dr. King had reached an agreement with the white leaders of the city. Desegregation would begin. Do you know what desegregation means? Segregation means when people are separated, because, in this case especially, because of the color of their skin. Desegregation means undoing that so people can come together. One month later, I was playing on a playground I'd never been allowed to play on before. Two months later, my family ate at a diner we'd never been allowed to eat in before. Our march made the difference. We children led the way, singing the songs of freedom. One thousand strong we came. What a beautiful story. What a powerful, moving, and inspiring story that was, don't you think? And you may be wondering, the... The narrator in that book, the girl, she made a change. And you might be wondering, what can you do? And I think one of the best things that we can do is we can learn about racism. And we can talk about racism. And we can stand up to racism. And it's okay to notice the difference in people's skin color. And it's okay to be curious about it. Because that's how we learn. And the more we learn, we realize that those differences are beautiful. And the more we learn, we realize that we, we can see racism when it happens in our lives. And we can stand up and say, that is racism. And it has no place here. And it needs to go away. And with that, I would like to leave you with a message of hope. Continue to learn. Continue to talk. And continue to stand up, and together we can change the world, just like in the story. Thank you.
Goodbye.